Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. So glad you can join us on this first day of October 2015. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, another gun-free zone left victims defenseless as a crazed gunman killed at least 13 people at a community college in Oregon. Then, a day after Russia launched an attack against ISIS in Syria, Iran begins to dispatch ground troops into the region to fight alongside the forces loyal to President Bashir al-Assad. Meanwhile, Russia says future airstrikes in Syria will be accompanied by ground advances by the Syrian army and its allies. And the InfoWars team launches a counter-protest in support of the Second Amendment at UT where University of Texas police arrested protesters for exercising their First Amendment right. Anywhere in this West All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> Today, we were greeted by the very unfortunate news of a shooting in Oregon. This was at UCC in Oregon, and reports continue to evolve, but as of right now, they're listing 13 killed, including the shooter, also 20 people injured, and as of right now, they're listing the shooter as a 20-year-old male. And as, as usual, you know, the bodies aren't even cold yet, and people are saying that we need to ban this, we need to ban that. But as Michael Cargill, you know, of Central Texas Gun Works, who is a friend of our show, he always says that you can't legislate crazy. That is the case here as well. You know, of course, our thoughts and prayers go out to the families affected. But the issue about it is whether you go back Old Testament and it's people killing each other with rocks and spears or more modern times where people are killing each other with, you know, uh, assault rifles or whatever it may be, even though we have an article about that we'll touch on a little bit later. People with ill intent have ill intent and passing no matter of laws is going to stop that. Uh, murder's been illegal for how many years now? People still murder each other. We see mothers drowning their children in bathtubs. We see all manner of things, people poisoning each other with arsenic. So it's a tool like anything else referring to the firearm. It can be used uh, for a good purpose, but they don't want to talk about the 12-year-old Oklahoma girls who shoot the home intruders when they're home alone. No, they just want to talk about things like this. They are very unfortunate, and of course our thoughts and prayers go out to the people affected, and we'll see what happens in the coming days. And in other news, many of us have seen the very shocking videos that have come out about these Planned Parenthood facilities. Uh, people saying that they want to use the proceeds of dead baby parts to finance Lamborghinis. Uh, people who are medical professionals saying that they thought that the fetuses were supposed to be dead before they underwent the uh, chopping up procedures and uh, all manner of other horrific things. And now we have the head of Planned Parenthood saying that questions about the aborted baby part sales are sexist. And representatives voted 241 to 185 for legislation that would see the organization defunded while the investigation into the purported sale of aborted uh, tissues and organs continues. The bill states for the one year period beginning on the date of the enacted of this division, no funds authorized or appropriated by the federal law may be used or made available to, for any purposes to Planned Parenthood Federation of American Incorporated and it says, meanwhile, Planned Parenthood head Cicely Richards has complained that the questions put to her by the congressional panel this week are sexist. So it's sexist to ask questions about videos, which they say are edited. And of course, the videos are edited. These are, you know, 
dinner conversations, lunch conversations that could be, you know, two hours long. They edit it down to the best, you know, five or so minutes, best 10 minutes. They do the same thing with presidential speeches. Obama speaks for an hour. They knock it down to two to three minutes to make it digestible for the populace. Is it out of context? You can debate that one way or another when you talk about the speech. But when we talk about these Planned Parenthood videos, I don't think they are out of context. This is just uh, putting them in the proper context that they don't want to be viewed in. And, you know, we see so many people come out and defend Planned Parenthood, particularly when it comes to these videos. These are people who know that they're going to jail if these facts come out or if this turns out to be true. And I definitely believe that it is true. So, of course, they may get up there and bend the truth, if not been the truth, if not all out lie. When it comes to uh, bringing this information to the light, they don't want this information to touch the light of day. They don't want, want one, to defund their organization. They don't want two, to end up in a prison cell. So they're going to do anything that they have to in order to make sure that those uh, situations do not come about. And now many people are involved or touching on these issues. And one such person who was questioned about this was one Nancy Pelosi. And she was stumped when she was asked about whether or not babies are human beings. And here's a look at her response. Take your ideological questions. I, 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 don't, I don't have... Look, you know, no, listen, I want to say something to you. I don't know who you are, and you're welcome to be here in freedom of this press. I am a devout, practicing Catholic, a mother of five children. When my baby was born, my fifth child, my oldest child, was six years old. I think I know more about this subject than you, with all due respect. And it's very troubling to see one of our elected officials who cannot answer such a simple question as to whether or not these are human beings. So from the war in the womb to the all-out war, we now see Iranian troops to conduct ground attacks in Syria. Iran has dispatched hundreds of ground troops to Syria to fight alongside the forces loyal to President Assad. And it says Lebanese Hezbollah troops will also join the Iranian forces, the sources note, as well as Iraqis, and I believe this is coming out of Reuters. And Kurt Nimmo takes a similar look at this with his article, Iran, Hezbollah, Syrian Army Prepared to Launch Offensive Against CIA Proxies. And he notes, in May, the Al-Qaeda-aligned jihadist group that has pledged allegiance to the Islamic State al-Nusra captured the last Syrian government-held area in Idlib. So... We all know that these guys are getting, uh, as far as the Islamic State, they're getting airdrop grenades from Western governments. They're riding around in uh, SUVs, uh, the Humvees, uh, the MRAPs, and all these type of things that have been left over by Western governments. And, you know, they're pretty much given uh, free reign to run around because we see people like John McCain saying that we have to fund these guys to shoot down the Russians just like they did, you know, uh, years past. So it's a very troubling situation because especially when you got a guy like McCain who kind of flip flops like, yeah, I was out there hanging out with these guys. I didn't know they were Al Qaeda rebels. And people said, OK. And now he's saying, yeah, we got to go arm these guys to shoot down the Russians. And it's <laughs> it just really doesn't make a whole lot of sense, in my opinion, the way these guys are going about it, talking about uh, the big Western governments. But uh, the things continue to rage out of control. And like I said, I'm not here cheerleading for Putin or for Assad, I'm not saying these guys are the greatest guys on earth, but they're not the ones who are funding people with these Al-Qaeda rebels, these ISIS rebels who are burning down Christian villages, chopping people's heads off, uh, ripping people's hearts out, and doing all manner of uh, horrible, horrific things over there in the Syrian area. So it's uh, plenty of blame to go all the way around. And we began our show talking about Oregon. There is some more Oregon news coming up. And we see Oregon to begin as the third state in the U.S. to allow recreational marijuana sales. It says Oregon residents 21 years and older can buy up to a quarter ounce of dried flowers. Dried flowers, it's kind of funny if they put that in there. Roughly uh, 200 existing from roughly 200 existing medical use marijuana dispensaries as a new law took effect and that backers hope will help curb the flourishing black market. So as you guys have probably seen, I've seen as well, the gangster movies, the prohibition movies about guys riding around with their Tommy guns shooting out of windows because of alcohol prohibition. And it's such a romanticized type of thing when we look back on it in history, but that same thing is happening today, but it's not alcohol, it's drugs. So when people realize that this is one of the big reasons why we have such a huge black market for things, including marijuana, if people just realize that if we take off the tough sanctions we have on it, 
And not just to say that we need to have people uh, legalize marijuana so we have people smoking in the streets. My biggest deal with the war on drugs, as far as marijuana is concerned, is we put people in jail, or in prison rather, for mandatory minimums. So we got people going to jail, record numbers, actually releasing violent offenders to put in these you know, weed smokers. But on top of that, we're funding a huge black market or helping to fund a huge black market by keeping these things illegal. Now, once again, I'm not advocating that anybody go out there and smoke marijuana just to smoke it, but I'm also not advocating that we have people locked up for you know small, uh, small uses or just under mandatory minimums. It's completely absurd that you would let out a murderer or a rapist to put in some guy who you know, got caught, caught with a, a joint in his pocket when he got pulled over by the cops. It's completely ridiculous, but people will continue to push this. And it's so troubling to me that people will knock something like medical marijuana, moving from recreational to medical, they'll mock, knock medical marijuana, but they'll go to you know Walgreens or CVS or whatever, and they'll get something that's even stronger in a prescription pill, something like Oxycontin, which I believe is synthetic heroin, and they think that's perfectly fine. You know, they'll have uh, people high as a kite, you know, with their prescription pills. You know, they get in car wrecks or whatever else. They're addicted to the stuff. They actually have to go to some facility to get off of it. And you have to go through some type of program to get off of it. But they demonize things like medical marijuana. And when you sit back and look at it, because I don't take any drugs, so I can look at it very, uh, from a very uh, far off view. I can look at this side over here. I can look at that side over there. And I say, okay, so you can get high off the illegal drugs just like you can get high off the prescription drugs. You can get addicted to the illegal drugs just like you can get addicted to the prescription drugs. What's the deal here? Well, it's not so much in terms of addiction when we talk about marijuana, but the pharmaceutical companies don't want you to be able to grow something in your backyard or in your basement that may put them out of business or at least knock a big hole in their profits. They don't want to do that. So therefore, they make things illegal so you can't use them as your personal benefit. Once again, not talking about recreational drugs, but medical drugs, because you can see people who have uh, numerous health benefits from smoking marijuana. You know, like I said, it's, it's not something I'm recreation, uh, I'm pending recreation or advocating that you go out there and do for recreational purposes. But if you can have a medical benefit, why not do that in terms of things like marijuana? But I've lingered on that far enough because we also have another story coming out of Oregon. And this is the family, you guys may recall, who was uh, the owners of a bakery. And they got arrested, well not arrested, but they got shut down basically because they would not bake a cake for a lesbian couple. Now the bakers do want to stress the point that they have made cakes for uh, homosexuals in the past. They just refuse to make wedding cakes because they said, hey, we just don't believe that. And they do have a First Amendment right in the United States of America. That is their freedom of religion. But they're saying that the uh, homosexual couple's rights trump their rights, so that's what the state said. And they ordered them to pay $135,000 to the uh, same-sex couple because they were denied service. Once again, they didn't discriminate in terms of sexual orientation. They said, hey, we'll bake you any other cake. We'll bake you a, a graduation cake or a birthday cake or whatever else. They just said, because of our religious beliefs, we cannot provide you with the uh, wedding cake that you desired. That was not enough for some people. And now they're offering, or now they're demanding rather, that this bakery pay $135,000 to this same sex couple. And this is even a different deal from the marriage license fiasco that has come about recently because that was a state employee and you can argue yes or no she should have put out the marriage license but this is a couple they're privately owned they don't get government funds they're not paid by the government they don't get a government paycheck so at the end of the day it should be their personal preference or their religious preference who they are able to provide wedding cakes to but not everybody sees that that way in the united states of america now in our next segment we're going to have a special report or I guess pretty much my rant about some things that happened today as far as the campus of the University of Texas. Because Joe Biggs, Kit Daniels, and some of our other crew members went out there and they were having a Moms Demand Action rally. And for anybody who's not familiar with the group, they are a, they are a Bloomberg affiliated group and they go out and pretty much try to take your Second Amendment rights away. And to anybody who says that's out of context, well, we've done multiple reports. I don't have the flyer on the desk right now. But they'll hand you a flyer, it says, we